So Svenegger, we're here today to talk about uh, DECT NA Plus and Nordic becoming a full member of the DECT Forum. But I want to start, uh, how did this all start? It started in your organization, right? You know, I got a call one day and they're saying, hey, we're working on this new standard. It's called DEC 2020. And I said, DEC? What is this all about? Right? Are we going to do phones? Because you all remember these old phones that were DEC. Turns out that the initiative they were looking at was making a standard for IoT, a standard that would, uh, you know, have, I think, three really good things with it. Number one, it's a standard for IoT that would provide long range, uh, high data rate, and in a in a in a licensed spectrum or a spectrum licensed to DECT. So that's in a way, if you want to make an IoT standard, that felt that's like the holy grail of what you want to do. So from there on, we 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 got engaged. We thought there was a big opportunity, and as we do in Nordic, we like to invest early. We like to be part of the the initiative early and. And we are like allocated engineers start working on it. And, and then the ball started rolling. And then we came to you, Kjetil, and we said, we're working on this thing. What do you think about it? And, and, and you came on board and, and, and what did you see? No, I, I immediately latched on to this. Uh, it's very unique. We've been working in this industry for so long and it's very unique that you actually have frequency band that opens up for our type of applications, right? So that was my immediate trigger. This, this is something, right? This, this has a chance. There's always these new standards coming. But when you come with actually an allocated globally license band and frequency band, it's just perfect, right? Mm. So being in the driver's seat and, and, and solving some of the problems that we see in, in IoT today in terms of massive deployment, massive networks, conjunction in the 2.4 gigahertz space, uh, we actually have a, a frequency band and a standard that where we can actually deploy it. So taking some of the best from the cellular world and putting it more into the context of, of Nordic and, and, and our type of low power sensor devices, right? So it had kind of all of the prospects that we need for something that, that has the chance of succeeding. And obviously defining products and working with partners and working with customers to figure out how, how would this look, how would it feel, what do we need to do? Uh, had everything that I liked with defining products and, and uh, looking forward into the future. Uh, but yeah, you talked about investing early, etc. So now we're, we're stepping up our investment, right? We're going into the forum. Why is that important for Nordic? Why do we need this standard to succeed? Well, if you're investing, we want to make sure that the standard becomes a standard that is globally accepted. It becomes a robust standard, a standard with enough participants to contribute, and a standard that the customers can trust will be there tomorrow and the day after and 10 years from now. We've done that many times uh, with other standards. Uh, the biggest investment the standards we've done was, of course, in, in the Bluetooth SIG, where we were instrumental in defining Bluetooth Low Energy. But we're always a part of, of, of making standards succeed. Uh, we believe in open standards uh, as, as a way of uh, the, the thing that makes the market big enough. So uh, in stepping up the investment is, is a natural thing for us. And also, I think, of course, it, it's certainly triggered by some of the interest we're seeing from customers. And some of those customers, right, they, they, are, they are already out there trying to deploy various uh, wireless uh, technologies, whether it's smart city or metering or utilities or, or factory automation. Um, but they all run in various type of problems, right? So working with these customers, understanding those problems, what happens in a very dense area where you have millions of million nodes in a very dense space? How do you best utilize the frequency band to solve some of those congestions? What do you do about devices that moves around? How do you make all this work, right? And also, how do you make it scalable? You talked about range, right? So when you want to deploy something across a city or across a factory, the cost of installation and the cost of actually owning that infrastructure, well, how many nodes do you need? So this idea of having a, a autonomous self-forming, self-healing type of mesh that has this ultra reliable communication in the bottom, extremely low latency, high density. It solves a lot of those problems we see with some of the other standards uh, out there today. Uh, and it, it, it's something that customer needs. I mean, they can take full ownership of the network, full ownership of the deployment. Um, DEC NR Plus is now part of the, the ITU 5G standard as the only non-cellular standard. So it's about deploying those pr private networks where you have full control of the network and the devices that sit on those networks. So, that, so that's uh, exciting. Um, it comes also as a an, as an standard for cordless phone. You mentioned that, right? So there's a, there's a lot of legacy audio type of product that, yeah. 
yeah. that also will benefit from this enhancement. So there's kind of a side side story here where if you need just reliable, ultra low latency, long range communication, again, with this frequency band, you can do that in, in things like professional audio and some of those like, type of equipment. So what um, you're saying, Kjetelista, you're almost saying that this is too good to be true. <laughs> but that is exactly what I think too. I mean, in some way that, and I mentioned the three things that I love the most, you know, the, the, the spectrum, you know, the, the data rate and the range. Of course, we always in Nordic, we trade data rates for power consumption, for instance. We do all those kind of tricks. Uh, and it is sophisticated modulation techniques. It's, it is a really, really special uh, technology, I think. And it builds upon those cellular things, right? So cellular is now deployed in, in billions and billions of devices. So that, that part of the technology is proven. So folding that back into this standard again to write the, and, and develop this new standard. Yeah, I, I think it's a winning combination. Yeah. But, it, but it has to be proven, right? So we're very enthusiastic. We, we are engaging with customers, but, but there are zero products in the market today using NR Plus and, and obviously we're working towards that. So. Um, when I, do you expect we can even see something here, Sven Egger? I think, you know, people will be very excited when they start to try this out. Uh, uh, but from a from, from Nordic perspective, uh, you know, as you said, Jette, a lot of this comes from, from cellular technology as well, the, the baseline technology. Uh, and uh, of course, we're leveraging all the investments we've done in the cellular IoT in the last five and six years to build NR Plus devices. So hopefully by, by next fall, we will have customers designing products and uh, trying out these things, uh, seeing how, how well it works in their application. Yeah. And one of the things we did to kind of accelerate this adoption was working with, with a partner company called Wirepass out of Finland, right? So we know obviously the cellular technologies, we know the radios, et cetera, and then bring in expertise and know-how in, in how do you deploy massive mesh uh, opportunities. So being a company focusing on mesh, and it's like what you said, I mean, for a standard to succeed, there needs to be more players, there needs to be more momentum, it couldn't be Nordic only. So, so partnering with something that complements the Nordic expertise was, was very fruitful. And, and just going to market and talking to customers and having kind of more angles to look at it, and, and obviously welcoming other people to join the deck forum and drive the standard forward. That's, that's what we want to do. Um, I think that uh, Wirepass brings some unique capabilities to the table. We know Wirepass for very many years. They're really, really good at, at what they do. Right? And, and we work with them in Bluetooth Low Energy. We're working with them in R Plus. We know how good they are. And I, it really accelerates the whole development, I think. So of course, we're excited about the technology. Yet. Uh, we think this can do great things. But I think one of the things that people are curious about is what kind of applications would this be most applicable for initially? Yeah, so, so I mentioned a smart city and I can be a little bit more specific in, in street lighting. I think street lighting is something that can benefit massively from, from DEC NR Plus. Mm. We have opportunities within utility meeting, whether it's electricity, uh, water or gas. Uh, we see various tracking applications, container ships, those type of applications. And, and again, there's, there's a side spiel here around professional audio where we actually also have early customer engagement and interest, right? So it's actually quite varied. It's more in terms of the industrial business, the business type of uh, uh, applications and not so much consumer, but who knows? We see applications uh, out there that requires a little bit longer range around home and new ecosystem. And, and uh, I wouldn't foresee, a, or I wouldn't exclude the future where DECT NR Plus is actually the foundation for other type of technologies as well. I think that's very, very promising. So. Uh, DEC NR Plus defines up to a certain standard. You can run a lot of that on top of it. So very excited to see what we can do within the DEC forum to drive uh, a bigger ecosystem around NR Plus going forward as well. I think one of the benefits we have uh, working on standards like this and the application you mentioned is that we are still in just an infancy when it comes to IoT adoption. I talk a lot about that and the endless opportunity that is in front of us. But uh, one of the things, uh, maybe as a challenge uh, for you, Chet, uh, managing our portfolio of, of products, how does this complement or potentially compete with the other products we provide? No, oh, that's that's also a good question. And we sat there in, in a similar setting uh, not too long ago about talking about Wi-Fi and the Holy Trinity. And here we are again talking about the fourth initiative <laughs> for wireless. And, and there's so many standards, right? But, but I think it, it's it's all complementary to other. They, they each have their benefits, and, and 
for DECT NR Plus, it solves some of the problems that the other, uh, other technologies that, that we have can't, right? Mm -hmm. It's very complementary to cellular. Cellular is, is very good for a lot of the same application. But if you want to have that private ownership of the network and don't be dependent about the, the infrastructure, own your own infrastructure, it's a good alternative to a pure cellular kind of play. Um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth Low Energy and Thread and those uh, have their kind of applications. It doesn't have the same scalability. So it's all about finding the right technology for the right type of applications. And usually it's, it's not a, a one technology fits all. It's, you actually have to have a portfolio and, and DECTNR Plus is uh, it's a very good complement to, to our other uh, offering. Do you envision that there will be devices from Nordic that combines different technologies with NR Plus? I think if you follow Nordic, you will see that that's uh, some of the things that we are good at is combining our technology. So, so obviously the, the path there where, where you go. I mean, these devices also need to be on board of the network and the Bluetooth Low Energy could be a perfect technology to sit next to this. Um, there will be products out there we're already talking about that bridges from a DECT NR Plus to a cellular world, right? Mm -hmm. So there will be gateways type of application or it could be Wi-Fi back also. So it's natural to see that Nordic will combine some of these uh, technologies uh, also going forward. So to wrap this up, Sven Egel, what do you think is the most important thing now going forward? Well, I think one of the very important things is that uh, the standard uh, and everything around that uh, gets defined properly, tested, verified, uh, and become that robust standard we want to see forward. And of course, we're putting a lot of effort into that right now. And then we need to complement it from Nordic side. We need to complement that with some great products, of course. Right now, it's it's in 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 the Nordic sessions. It's just you know, take your shirts up and get going. It's it's hard work, uh, but we're on a good path. And I think this will be. Uh, I'm very optimistic. That this will be very successful uh, products. Thank you for that.